the biggest MMO scam ever. Ever. The arrival of Kickstarter and the unfulfilled desire for exciting new MMOs combined with Unreal Engine's capability to make absolutely looks anything nice. look beautiful was the perfect formula for the introduction of MMO scams into the world. Absolutely. Today, we're going to talk about the five most interesting MMO scams to exist so far. We'll talk about how they came to be and perhaps most important. Can you imagine if this guy put Ashes of Creation on the list? Oh my God, people would lose their fucking minds where they are now was it malice or ignorance that led to millions of dollars disappearing while having nothing to show for it which ones went to jail and which ones got away with it probably and all were we got wrong away about any of them let's find out first up chronicles of illyria this was another fascinating one to follow with a story that's going to start to sound very familiar as we go through this list okay. it all starts on kickstarter led by a man named jeremy walsh right was it malice or ineptitude that caused this to play out the way that it did let me know down in the comments what you think. It all starts on September 18th, 2015. Mm -hmm. The first screenshot was shared on the company's Twitter feed. Remember what this looks like. It's going to be important because this is- Hand shot? Hand size? Who the fuck wants hand size? Foot size? It's not what was delivered. Then, ironically, on April 1st, 2016, mm -hmm. the first gameplay footage is shown in a video titled Meet the Team. Again, remember what this footage looks like. Then yeah, this is, um, this footage is from, uh, Elder Scrolls, uh, 3, I think. It was Morrowind. On May 3rd, 2016, Soulbound Studios ago. announces its long-awaited Kickstarter campaign asking for just 900,000 US dollars and promising a this. Aging, dying, and souls. An epic 10-year storyline invites you to experience your character over multiple lifetimes. With each life, you will develop your character and make your mark in the Chronicles. Bro, that sounds morbid When your character as fuck. eventually dies, their soul will be reincarnated stronger than before. I don't want to do that. And their spirit and destiny will live on in another character of your making. What the, the game fuck? Being described was on a scale never before seen it was going to have every system and feature that you've ever wanted all rolled into one yeah i mean that, that's just like the best idea right because like why have only some good systems let's just have every good system and that way we'll just make everybody happy and it'll be perfect massive mmorpg or at least that's what they told us of course and apparently it worked just one month later on june 3rd 2016 they hit their kickstarter goal they with have. four people going as far as donating ten thousand dollars each so that they would be considered royalty in the game At the oh god oh my god oh my god who would do that oh man like it's like we can call these people dumb right but like there's plenty of people that spend this kind of money on gotcha games too so it's like really not that big of a surprise like i think that's kind of just like normal established titles yeah but that wasn't as much money to be fair at this point in 2016 soulbound studios claimed they would have the game in players hands in just over 18 months not in 18 months wasn't this like four years ago Finished, but at least in a playable state. After raising $1 million on Kickstarter, Jeremy announced the game would continue to raise money on its own personal website. That makes and sense. raise money it did, to the tune of over $8 million. As the deadline for the Bro, game- Bro, I need to make an MMO. I, I need to do this. This is such a good idea. Like, that's such a good idea. And then you just take everybody's money, and then you, you disappear. And you don't make the game. That's like the... Or maybe you could make the game, but it's really bad. And you actually spend like a million dollars making the game. And you pocket the other eight, the other seven million. Game approached in 2017. Jeremy announced that the game isn't going to meet the deadline he had promised. Due oh. to their inability to attract talented developers. Yeah. The first sign that I things really why. weren't going well. Fast forward to 2018. When everyone was originally expecting the game to be Look in a playable game fast play. forward to 2018, when everyone was originally expecting one more, wow. one more fast forward to 2018, Yippee! when everyone was originally expecting the game to be in a playable state, and it was not. In yeah. fact, no one had any proof that there was a playable game at all. No member of the public had played a single minute of it. Later in that year, November 2018, with over six million in funding secured, people were beginning to worry about the future of the game. Yeah. They noticed it had been nearly two years since they saw any- Wow, look at that. Is this RuneScape 3? I never even saw the game. I've only watched uh, OSRS. So I've never seen- So this is RuneScape 3. Holy fuck. Wow, it does look a little bit better, huh? 
any new footage of the game. Surely, with millions of dollars and years of work put into the game, there must be something impressive to show. Almost another. Well, they have the belt. They literally have the guys. What the hell happened to the back of his head? What the hell is this? Another year passes by, and on September 6, 2019, uh -huh. the first gameplay footage since 2017 is released. Wait, Remember wait, when wait, I wait, one second. The first gameplay. Ah. <sighs> footage since 2017 is released. Remember when I told you to remember what the original gameplay footage would look like? This is what backers yes. thought they were getting. No, it's what they were told they were getting. Oh, and this that's... is what they got. <laughs> oh my god. To say that fans were disappointed would be an understatement of a lifetime. The game was now two years past its initial wow. time delivery date and eight times over budget. And Look this was game. all they had to show for it. This was the result of four years of development. Dude, imagine watching the Unreal 5 tech demo and then thinking, bro, I donated $10,000. I can't wait to have my own castle and have it look like this. And the game comes out. And then it's this. And millions of dollars of backer I'm a money. Founder, it's guys. here where most of the backers soured on the game. Some going as far as to threaten legal action against Soulbound. On March yeah. 11, 2020, the Settlers of Illyria event would... They should have, a, they should have a, a cosmetic for the founders. And it's one of those hats with a propeller on it. <laughs> it says royalty on it. Take place as oh a my free, God. free alpha event to allow participation in a 45 day test of the a game. clown mask. Of yeah. course, this pre pre alpha nose. test included massive microtransactions to allow players to spend hundreds or wait, even wait, wait, what, pre pre what? alpha tests included massive microtransactions to allow players to spend hundreds ah. or even thousands of dollars buying plots of land within this unfinished game. If there you go. Buying land in an unfinished game. You know, people used to do this. They would sell land in Florida and they had to make a law against selling land on the moon because they kept doing this in real life, too. Like most online scams were real life scams until somebody made a law against it. If they wanted. Amazing. It was a disaster. Players were not happy. And now, with a much more realistic idea of what this game was going to be, the funding for the game stopped coming in. In an event that I was only why. surprising to the backers with their heads six feet under the sand, on March 25th, 2020, Soulbound announced the studio would be shuttering. On April... But to our great sadness, with the failure of Settlers of Elria and five long months of only limited crowdfunding revenue coming in, Soulbound Studios has officially run out of money. Last night, I was forced to do something that I never thought I would have to do. I closed the online store, put Settlers of Elria map back into read-only mode, and laid off all the employees. And after that, I booked my trip over to Cancun with my $8 million, and I'm on to the next stage of my life. 6 2020 however there was an about face due to yep. the threat of legal consequences an faq appeared on the coe website stating that the game would very much be released and oh, that they did yes. not mean to imply I it was shutting this. down this was oh, likely for yeah. legal reasons as they had promised to deliver a game in exchange for the money they'd collected uh -huh. to simply state that the game wasn't coming without refunding any of the money could leave them vulnerable to some legal action that's true so they have to technically make a game now is the game going to be any good no but it will it will be a game it, it, it could be tetris or minesweeper but it is a game with angry bankers undeterred by this promise on august 17 2020 uh -huh. a class action lawsuit was filed demanding that soulbound refund the money for the game smart they failed to deliver absolutely soulbound would decline the demands to refund the backers so on no refunds no refunds gentlemen 
February 3rd, 2021, yeah, the case was legally game. filed with the court. Yeah. Around the same time, Illyria was posting a couple of videos a month about the progress of the game, probably to of appear course. as though they were still working on it. So where's the game now, two years after all of that? I'm and sure how did the lawsuit end? Videos. Was justice served? Was the people's money returned? Was anyone held accountable for the complete mismanagement of the funds? No. Well, I wish I could say that the court laid the law down on this man in this practice of taking people's money without the realistic possibility of being able to deliver what was promised. But... I wish the court case had sent a signal to would-be Kickstarter scammers, but unfortunately the lawsuit was dismissed and Walsh escaped with everything except for his reputation. He's now- Oh, he only has eight million dollars. Oh, bro, like, oh working on a completely different game in a completely different engine known as Kingdoms of Illyria. My guess is this game has as much of a chance of turning into a polished Wait. finished as Kingdoms of Illyria. He's now working on a completely different game in a completely different engine known as Kingdoms of Illyria. <laughs> I honestly think that you shouldn't be able to sue him the second time. You should have been able to sue him the first time. But like at a certain point, like how much due diligence does somebody have to do before they just decide to light their own game on fire or light their own money on fire? My guess is this game has as much of a chance of turning into a polished finished product as Chronicles of Illyria. Whatever yeah. you do, don't give Jeremy Walsh another dime of your money for a game that isn't yet complete, because it's probable he's selling you a bridge to nowhere. I'm not saying don't buy his game when it's finished. I'm just saying don't buy it. Well, I would assume that whenever you, whenever it's finished, it's not really finished. They're just selling it. Yeah, so I, I mean, they're just, they're not, it's not the finished game. They're just selling the game now his game until it's finished which is actually fantastic advice for any of the games on this list today next up we have the day before but oh first boy. a word from today's sponsor crasher nirvana is an amazing martial arts fantasy mmorpg mobile game that was just released in this game you will play as a warrior and experience a vast open world with immersive graphics there are how do we how does a mobile game have this but the chronicles of Illyria couldn't figure it out for the pc how's that possible like, you guys ever think about this for, like, three seconds? Like, how is it possible we got a mobile game looks like this, but the PC games look like shit? Like, what happened? Seven classes and roles within the game, each with specific skills, weapons, and appearances. In the exploration of the vast open world, you can fight with monsters and bosses in different maps and scenes to acquire materials to learn martial arts, upgrade your weapons, and practice your successive attack skills. If you get bored with your first character, you're free to change your profession. Not only that- Looks better combat than Wu Long. You can also turn into a demon. A uh -huh. demonized player has a completely different appearance along with more powerful abilities. Yeah, In the process of completing tasks, you will encounter a variety of NPCs and constantly delve into the character's storyline. The game also features a deep PvP and guild versus guild system where you can team up with friends to fight together and challenge yourself with more special side stories. The game all I love how like a lot of these mobile games just invent these numbers. Like, what's your power level? 136 million. Oh, so it's pretty low then. You know, most normal players are up to 1 billion now. Also adds an intriguing social system that allows players who prefer interpersonal relationships to quickly make friends, find love, and get married to other players in game. So be sure to check out this unique that escalated MMORPG quickly. within a gorgeous oh and my mysterious God. setting. Log into the game now and get 200 what? consecutive draws for free. It's highly possible for you to get rare drops, pets, and skins, so download it I now it using is. the link in the description below and use my code GIFT2023 for epic rewards. Thank you for listening, and now let's get back to the video. This is the most recent possible scam to be added mm -hmm. to this list, and I say possible scam because it's not really confirmed yet. I don't think that... I do not think that I have seen sufficient evidence that the day before is a scam. I actually don't think so. This story starts in January of 2021, when a developer known as Fantastic dropped the trailer for their upcoming title, The Day Before. It was announced as an open world survival MMO set in a deadly post-pandemic America that has been overrun by flesh-hungry infected. 
it caught massive attention. The public was incredibly excited for this idea. Oh, yeah. People People they announced this. that on March 31st, 2021, they would... People have always wanted a survival shooter, like, MMO FPS game. And people have wanted this ever since, like, the 2000s. And there were a couple of attempts at it. Like, right now we have Destiny. I think that's probably the biggest game like that. But besides that, you've also got uh, fucking... What's that other game? Uh, shit. Planet Side 2. Yeah, there it is. The Division. Yeah, a few more. But, like, nothing has, like, really hit. Holy shit. Oh, yo, what's up, boys? Thank you, Shy Lily, for the raid. Thank you very much. Oh, my God. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, we're, uh, we're watching a video about games that are fucking scams. Or at least they might be scams. Show yeah, everyone some gameplay much. footage. The day before it was set to air on March 30th, they ended up delaying the trailer a week due to right. technical problems. The new airing date would be a week later, April 6, 9 a.m. And so on April 6, everyone tuned in and were okay. met with a starting soon screen. They would watch this screen for over nine hours until the stream was finally shut down. On what? So on April 6, everyone tuned in and were met with a starting soon screen. They would watch this screen for over nine hours until the stream was finally shut down. On Bro, that reminds me of that girl. Oh my fucking god, that girl, uh, Taylor, fucking, she has like a French last name or something like that, and she would just stand off the camera, oh, rocking, yes, yes. On April 9th, 2021, 13 minutes of gameplay was finally revealed. The 13 minutes of gameplay looked great as far as everyone could tell. It would look so great that the game would become pineapples. the most wishlisted game on Steam, over top of games from AAA studios like Spider-Man, Stalker 2, and even Bethesda Starfield. This yeah, caught people's why. attention. Fantastic accomplished this without having a great track record to mm -hmm. stand on. Looking back at their history, they sold early access to their game called Wild 8, and then almost immediately abandoned it. Ooh. Oh, not good. They moved on to a game called Dead Dozen, which had even more problems. It went into early access and shut down completely three months later. This one's going to be different. Things kept getting weirder, though. Yeah, this one will be different, The trailer looked though. too good to be true, literally. Developers would even react to the video, stating that at the very least, this looked like a vertical slice of the game that they had just created for the purposes of marketing it. Is this in-game? I remember the character in the cinematic. We watched the video and the girl was wearing like really tight pants and she had a big ass and nobody was even paying attention to the gameplay at all like it was like a 17 minute video and people were like yeah i don't know about this game i i, I don't know maybe if they release gameplay for it i'll have to watch it and it's like you just watched a 17 minute video of gameplay we're like no i didn't day before it is oh my I'm getting very The Division vibes from this. Wow, the shadows are incredible. The lighting is just excellent. Told you, Look at show this. reflections. Oh, man. In an MMO, though? I'm, okay, That's, I'm skeptical. Uh, how can they do that? I'm getting a feeling this has all been rendered. This is not... I think it's more of a vertical slice on first impression. Yeah. A vertical slice, if you don't know, is this doesn't mean that the whole game is done and it looks like this. This is probably a section that they popped out yeah. uh, and were able, to, were able to develop and carve out and make certain things look final when they're not. That's what I happened with, with Watch Dogs. Uh, that's what happened with cyberpunk for a lot. So it's kind of like whenever you take a picture or like you, you clean up your room and then you throw all of this the stuff behind the door and hope your mom doesn't close the door and see what's behind the door. Yeah. Out of it. So we're uh, I'm a little skeptical. Things are about to get heated. Over here. Ooh. Here's the thing, and this is why ah, I think it's pre-baked. Yeah. That's supposed to be another player. Right. Can we go back? See the way they come in? It looks like it's an animated character that's not another player, but that means that those well, can't least, actually be other players. They, it could be. It oh. could very well be they have their own you know, AI players. They, they to could move be. like that, they would, they have, would have to be, to be AI, AI, because if right. it was a real player, the animation wouldn't well, I don't be, that, wouldn't smooth. be that smooth. When you actually play a game, you're kind of jittery. This by its... Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I, I don't find that to be very strong evidence, though. I think that the other examples and just like kind of like a logic example. Yeah, number one, not necessarily. Number two, it could be another player, but they're moving in that specific way. So it looks good for the video. Number three, it could be an AI generated, uh, you know, like fucking 
like NPC, which I also think is fine. Like there are many other examples where I think this was not really that big of a deal. Itself wasn't totally unheard of, but with this studio's history in mind, it starts to cast doubt on the viability of the game being delivered as promised. Things would continue to get weirder when Fantastic used a bait and switch tactic on their fans, pretending a big new announcement was coming for the day before. And then when the announcement arrived, it was actually for a completely different game? Essentially oh, using their cloud what? they had gained for the hype around the day before to advertise and launch another game they were working on okay, called smart. Prop Night. People weren't happy about it Prop at all, Night. but it was somewhat smoothed over when the studio also provided a launch day of June 21. 20 to be fair, their recent reviews are mostly positive. 2022. At that time, that meant the game was just over eight months away, so people were pretty excited. Fast forward to May 3rd, a little over a month before the game's scheduled launch date, Fantastic posted an announcement, letting the community know that they would be giving a big update about the game that week. And what was the big update they hyped up? The big update they got that week was that they were delaying the launch of the game another nine months, into March of 20... Oh, March? The release date of the game will be March 1st, 2023. Wait... Did we miss it? Oh my, how did we miss this? Oh fuck, guys. We missed the launch. Fuck. 23. The reason for the delay? Oh, well, there was such massive was interest so in the game that they wanted to spend more time making sure they got it right. Honestly, Smart. for a studio that had never seen this kind of interest, to look at its project landing at the top of the Steam wishlist and decide, hey, we better spend the time to get this right. Well, it isn't all that surprising. Yeah, that, that's Among smart. the changes I, that would be made... If I were them, I would do the same thing. Because if this game comes out and it's bad, it's a bad game that's it, period, for forever, that it's done. Like Cyberpunk, like BFA, uh, like mini games. Like, yeah, if it comes out, it's bad, it's bad. They would be switching the game over from UE4 to UE5. This also isn't surprising as we've seen multiple studios make the same move around the same time. So far, we have a lot of red flags that could be genuine mistakes or intentional deception, but there wasn't anything you could point at and say, these guys are definitely acting in bad faith. That was until they later posted a video asking for people to work on their game for free as volunteers. Naturally, alarm bells were really sad. I mean, as a Twitch streamer, I mean, this is kind of like normal. Now, it was weird that the studio was promising to deliver a game far, far beyond anything they'd ever created before. A game massive AAA studios are afraid to attempt because mm -hmm. of the budget it demands. But people were willing to give them the benefit of the doubt until they had a reason not to. And for a lot of people, this was that reason. How are you going to make a game that by its very nature required a AAA budget? All while using... Well, you just make all the people that were working for it work for free. I mean, it's actually kind of an ingenious solution because so you have this problem where it's like, oh, fuck, like we have to pay all these people. Well, what are we going to do? And somebody smart in the office is like, what if we just don't pay them? What if we just tell them that we're not going to pay them and that's it? And I'm like, do you think that's going to work? Apparently paid volunteers. What kind of quality would that provide? And what kind of a studio do you have to be to even be willing to publicly ask for such things? If things weren't bizarre enough... I don't know. I, I... I... I can commend somebody for just being that ballsy. On January 4th, 2023, Fantastic released another video on their YouTube that was a poorly hidden ad for another product they were developing. Ooh, some kind of office I app. See. The whole thing was pretending to be talking about the studio and its development of the day before, but actually it just felt like you were watching a really weird ad for some product. And that's because you were. They had now used their attention that they garnered for the day before to launch two other projects smart, that were not smart. the day before. And they had also tried to get people to work on their game for free yep. while also delaying the release date of the game twice. The longer the story goes on, the more the red flags pile uh -huh. up. And people noticed they ended up having to turn paid off the actors, comments and likes and dislikes paid. on videos to hide the ire of the community. On the bright side, the game was going to be launching in just three months. Yeah, so I mean, Fantastic's so chance deal. to vindicate I mean, themselves was fast approaching. That is, until so it mad? wasn't. 
On January 24th, 2023, the most wishlisted game on Steam was removed from Steam. In another twist, Fantastic oh. would go on to say that it was a bug that caused it to be removed from the Steam store. But then Fantastic oh. would later that same day post a separate post that contradicted oh. that, saying five days earlier, they found out that someone owned the rights to the name the day before. Unfortunately oh. for Fantastic, this also was a provable lie, as there was evidence that they had received word their trademark for the name had been rejected months prior. Two different posts with two different lies in the same day from these guys didn't do a lot to maintain and restore the faith of the people excited for the day before. With the game not even out yet, all of the red flags, and now a trail of lies leaking out of the studio, things were getting weirder than ever. People were beginning to worry if this was even a real game at all. The only trailer they'd seen seemed to have been at best a vertical slice of the game, or at worst, entirely pre-rendered. But that was all going to be a problem of the past though, as Fantastic was due to show their gameplay trailer featuring real gameplay this time. That's then, true, yeah, so like they're gonna fix it so it's not really a big deal. Like all the haters are just gonna get, get owned and uh, they're just gonna set the record straight and, and put them all to sleep. At the last second, they canceled, stating that they oh. needed to talk to their lawyers about their name being taken before releasing okay, the trailer. Right, never mind. The bad news never didn't mind, stop guys, there. The mind. trailer wasn't the only thing to be delayed. The game's launch was also going to be delayed again for another six months to November of 2023. The internet was now crying scam. Everyone was beginning to think this game didn't exist. In response, Fantastic would turn around shortly thereafter and drop the game. And they would say that it's not a scam. In fact, guys, I know that there have been some of you out there who think that our game is a scam. It is, in fact, not a scam. There's no need to worry. I know some people might think that it is a scam. It's not a scam. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Play trailer for the game. As expected, it didn't look nearly as good as the highly touched up trailer that came before it. Yeah. And to be honest, the fact that it looked worse now wasn't surprising and isn't all that uncommon in the industry. Uh -huh. They tend to show very early on a concept of what they are aiming to make that ends up being far more attractive oh, cool. than what they're actually able like to deliver on down the, the road. The house. We've seen a lot of AAA studios make this mistake in the past and then get rightfully called out on it by their communities afterwards. That looks pretty what good. What was odd about this trailer was that the 10 minutes or so of gameplay showed a massive world that felt far from finished. A massive finished. world. It was devoid of action, a uh -huh. lot of walking and not a lot going on, particularly for a game that was originally supposed to release a year ago. On top of that, viewers would also immediately notice that many of the assets in the game were purchased straight off of the Unreal Engine shop and set into the game nearly untouched. And then finally, to make things even the weirder, fuck? the trailer even had sections that were an exact copy of other game trailers. In fact, it Smart. wasn't just trailers that were copies of other games. Smart. Even the game's logo was a copy of another game's Smart. logo. Yep. And so was its art. This yeah, game I mean, you just, the thing is, well, you take everything that people have already done because you know that works. I mean, you know it works, and so you might as well just keep doing it. It may still launch, yeah. but we would have to be ignoring an absolute ton of red flags to say with any level of confidence that the launch will go well. If it does end up being a scam, it will have been an impressive one, as it will be the first scam MMO to have achieved the status of most wishlisted game on Steam. I hope they prove- I don't think it's a scam. I actually do not think that the day before is a scam the reason why i don't think that it's a scam is because they're not asking for money like who are they scamming they're scamming the publisher the publisher for this game is a literal like multi hundreds of millions of dollars company that has gone on record and said that they have reviewed the game and it's actually a game and it's actually happening. So unless you think that you as a Redditor, YouTube commenter, YouTube viewer have a better insight into this than the fucking multi 100 plus dollar million dollar company that is producing this game. Come on. Maybe they're just fucking dumb. Scamming my time by watching a 10 minute trailer? Yeah, I just don't think it's a scam. It's not a scam, it's a shit game? Yes, I think so. Multi, uh, multi hundred dollar company? Yeah, sorry, I was, I, I, I was, uh, for a second there I thought I was talking about Blizzard. It could just be a marketing scheme. I doubt that a massive publisher, like the one that's publishing this game, I forgot the name,
um, would want to attach themselves to something that's as problematic as this. There's no reason to. And also the publisher is mainly a mobile game publisher, which means that like reputation doesn't matter as much, but it still does matter because you, you have to have people that buy into the gotcha of like the next game. Phase drama? Oh, is there phase drama? I don't know. All of the doubters wrong, but as of right now, history would suggest this game will be sold in early access before dropping in a state that is completely unfit for release, ultimately being abandoned by the developer yet yep. again. Where is the game today? Two launch delays later and six months before its newest scheduled release date. Two launch delays so far. Okay. Keep that in mind. Well, on February 16th, 2023, the developer released a dev log where they talked about the journey of the game so far. Oh, the website is, is still up, but if you click add to wishlist, it just takes you to the front page of Steam because you can't actually add it to your wishlist because the game doesn't exist on Steam anymore. This game hasn't stolen anyone's money yet, so That's it's right. not a scam yet. But the developers have been caught lying. They've been caught copying other developers' work. They've promised the moon, and they have a history of selling unfinished games and then walking away from them. Hopefully Fantastic keeps delaying their game until it's finished, but I wouldn't spend any money on this one until it's proven to be a finished, <laughs> playable product. There's just way too many red flags at this point. If you want to be kept up to date on how this all unfolds, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. I don't know why I got And maybe even like the video and leave a comment if you're enjoying it. For the algorithm gods. Next up, Dream World. A game just... Oh god. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Here we go. Described as being the infinite open world MMO where you could sculpt the world and create yes. anything you wanted with do a massive catalog of objects in one single world with millions That's of right. other players. Millions. You could That's explore thousands of unique biomes and fight and tame Dreamworld's incredible creatures. Absolutely. This game claimed it would be the last game you ever played. That's this right. should have been the first red flag because the slogan doesn't even make sense. The Dreamworld Kickstarter led by Zachary Kaplan and Garrison. Th th this guy apparently just had like rich parents and... They just pretty much paid for everything, and so things kind of worked itself out. And Bellic made a lot of promises that were more or less impossible yep. to fulfill. But who are they? What is Zachary Kaplan's history that allows him to believe he is capable of taking these people's money and delivering on his massive promise? Okay. Well, he opened a crowdfund for a speaker you wear on your chest back in 2015 because he claims he was hit by a car not once, but twice while running with his earphones in. This man does... Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I could see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He doesn't need a speaker on his chest. He needs to stop running in the freeway. I think Eventually, he's Iron he stopped Man. that crowdfund and promised all of his backers they would be able to purchase these speakers in just a few short months. That was in 2015. And here Did we are happen? eight years later, and the website is still up with the product still listed. Oh, it says coming soon. Oh, I see. So it'll be soon then. Okay. Wait, it's $150? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking insane? It as coming soon. After that, he started a clothing brand, and it doesn't seem that panned out for him either. And neither of these projects are particularly horrible. Oh, wow, because it's like, that's a tiger, you know what I mean? That's cool, because it's like a, a fucking, like a tiger and shit. Horrible ideas. That's crazy. I won't fault anyone for trying to be an inventor or an entrepreneur. By themselves, yeah. these ideas are completely fine. The no, but they're not, though, because it didn't work out, it didn't work. So, like, if you have somebody that takes two L's and it's like, uh, you know, I got another one in me, I, I don't want to back that. This guy fucks up. Hey, you know what fuck ups do? <laughs> they fuck up. That's what happens. This guy's a fuck up. He got hit by a car twice. For the same reason.
problem arises when, Come with on. those two failed projects behind him, he decided he would then use everything he learned about creating wearable speakers and t-shirts and applied that incredibly relevant knowledge to creating a massively multiplayer online game. Zachary Kaplan and his partner Garrison Bellick would create a Kickstarter and start hyping up their new game and the fact that it would be able to have millions of people play together and modify the entire oh, world yeah. at will to their heart's content. This Fortunately, they good. didn't mislead backers by saying that they had come up with the solution to all of the problems that prevented this technology from existing already because i see yeah so they've already they've solved the problem that all of these big game studios could never solve as you can see here as that would have been lying to their investors the largest digital world that exists today can only have thousands of people then we came up with a solution that allows us to have millions oh. what is it Okay, well, that's not a good sign, is it? Naturally, all of this took place where many of these stories take place, Kickstarter. While other MMOs with $400 million budgets were struggling to achieve a fraction of what Dreamworld was uh -huh. promising, these two were going to do it all with a Kickstarter campaign for $10,000. That's yeah, right, $10,000 and two people to develop something multi-million dollar triple A. Yeah, these guys are going to just, they're, they're just going to borrow light. They're just going to whip something up and uh, just kind of just make the best game you'll ever play, you know? Just get it done. Studios get have the been work accomplished done. with hundreds of developers at their yeah. disposal. Yeah, for what sure. could go wrong? In what I can only describe Hopefully as the result not of a people car. pulling out their wallets while temporarily detached from their brains, this Kickstarter would somehow hit its goal. And then some, earning a total of 64... Why are they using fake money? i never seen a 20 or a 5 that looks like that. I thought Abraham Lincoln's supposed to be on that. What the hell are they using fake money for? thousand seven hundred and six dollars despite the Euros fact that it yeah, looked like every ounce of footage for this game was nothing more than random assets from the <laughs> no, wait a Engine second it's like every ounce of footage for this game was nothing more than random assets from the unreal <laughs> the fact that it looked like every One ounce more. of footage for this game was nothing more than random assets from the unreal engine store oh my God. slapped into the game with no rhyme or reason it looked like that because that's exactly what it was, as yes. Callum up improved on his YouTube channel by showing each mm -hmm. asset pack in the store. We Even the main that. protagonist featured in all of the shots is the default mannequin from the Unreal Engine. The red flags oh, were I everywhere, see. but somehow that didn't stop four people from donating nearly $2,000 to the- Wait, so the main character was just, like, a fucking placeholder? game. Once you have backed the game, you were promised access to the pre-alpha. However, the fine print stipulated that you wouldn't actually receive access to the pre-alpha until you also forced two of your friends to back the project as well. Oh, that's smart. You know, they do this with a lot of those, uh, these schemes where it's like you, you can't just get addicted. You have to get your friends addicted too. It's like, yeah, yeah, we've seen this, right? It's like whether you're selling juice, knives, stuff like that. Yeah. It's things like this that start to push this entire Kickstarter farther away from ignorance and closer to malice. Yes. As soon as the Kickstarter closed and they had all of their money, they went to work on the game, right? Well, no. They immediately went on vacation, causing everyone to wonder if they'd run with the money. They would eventually come back, however. I do have to give it to them. The Dream World guys, they did release a game. And you've got to have some big fucking balls to release what they did. You've got to have a massive dick to say, this is our game. You can play it on Windows 95. And resume work on the game. They started a Discord server that used 14 to 16 year olds as moder- <laughs> A full-time job was promised to 14 year old mod Jack who left the community so they wouldn't have to pay anyone. Like yep. many of the stories on this list, this is one that just kept on giving. Even Zachary's ex-girlfriend chimed in on the whole situation to explain that the nine years of game development experience Zachary claimed he had was actually nothing more than him writing ideas down on paper, at best. Garrison's claims- Oh guys, I have more than nine- I have like probably 20 years of game development experience then. Yeah, I, I got like at least 20, like minimum, probably more than that of being a former employee at Google were also a bit misleading as it turns out he was- <laughs> he used Google? <laughs> he searched for things before on Google. So, I mean, he basically works there, right? 
was nothing more than an intern for a few months. She also explains that she broke up with Zach for a number of reasons, one of which being that when she went to get her wedding ring refitted so that she could actually wear it, the jeweler explained that it was so fake that it would break in half if they tried. Oh my god. He gave her a fake wedding ring. Wow. This the guy got hit by a car two times for the same reason. I'm not at all materialistic and I don't care about the size or the quality of Oh no, no. The 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 thing is like I don't think it matters. Like I don't care. I I, I bet if if this guy had given her a, a ring pop ring, she would have probably responded better to him giving her a diamond ring, saying it's a diamond ring, and then it's not true. It's the fact that it's deceptive is the problem. A wedding ring, I'd argue it's the least important aspect of any marriage. But buying your fiance a ring so fake it can't be resized and then gaslighting her for asking yeah. about it shows severe lack of communication and maturity. Mm -hmm. But this was some pretty damning information. We basically oh, wow. confirmed that, that both of really these good. guys greatly misled their investors where it pertained to their previous experience in this type of a project. Sure Fortunately for them, they would have a chance to prove all of their doubters wrong. As with all things like this, and eventually they... the product would be delivered. That's right. Or and it not. Did. It did On May delivered. 20th of 2021, we'd finally get to see Dreamworld in all That's of its right. glory. Yes. The moment everyone had been waiting for. Content creator Skiasso posted a video of himself. Bro, you remember this guy? And he was so excited and happy about this game. He was like, bro, I know there have been haters, but I think it's really going to come through. It's going to happen. This guy had like 100 subscribers. And like, he's just going through the alpha for the game and he's like, oh God, oh God. It's like, guys, it might, maybe one day it'll be good. Playing the alpha. And, and, and by the way, like huge, huge W's for him because he actually came out and says, I was wrong. It's, it, it is bad. I was swindled. And it can happen to you. Let's just say it was somehow worse than anyone expected. This footage was pure nightmare fuel. It oh, looked yeah. like something that someone's toddler could have made in about five minutes of spamming random assets into an open world in the Unreal Engine. It was unforgivably bad, probably because that's exactly what Zachary did. In fact, I'm positive someone could have made something far more attractive given just five minutes in the Unreal Engine. Yeah, probably. Leaving everyone wondering, where did the money go and what was the time spent on? But well, did you see the picture of the vacation? Okay. Well, but hey, maybe the game just needed more time. It was an ambitious project after all. Well, that major reveal was two years ago. So where's the game now? Nearly two years after becoming quote unquote playable. To their credit, they did continue to try and at least give the impression that they were trying oh, to improve the game for some time, posting weekly updates Ooh, on their wow. website and on YouTube. However, those updates mysteriously stopped a little over two months ago. I think that like all of the YouTube reviewers should get together in like some fucking Illuminati thing and just try to hype up a game that's this bad and have everybody collectively talk about how great it is. And, and like fucking make all the viewers feel like they're in some kind of fucking like uh, 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 like Twilight Zone fever dream. Where everybody's talking about how fucking lit this game is, and every content creator is like, bro, this is gonna change the world. For all their work, their yeah, YouTube channel, see and what its happens. two years of existence has managed to gather about 500 subscribers. So, what is the future of Dreamworld? That's I don't lot. think there is one. These guys set out to make an ambitious game and failed. That yeah. in itself would have been acceptable if it weren't for the fact that they misled people, claiming they had years of experience in an industry that they didn't, in an effort to get their money claiming that they had a solution what to a idiot. problem that prevented games like this from existing in the first place when they didn't. Which begs the question, at which point do we call these things a con? At what point do they slide past ineptitude and into malicious intent? I think it's very obvious what the difference is. So if you are misleading people knowingly, like for example, saying that you worked at Google or saying that you have nine years of game experience, game design experience, I think that is very clearly 
misleading people. And also to an extent, I think that gross negligence and gross mismanagement is the same as misleading people and it should be treated the same. Because if you take people's money at a certain point, it doesn't matter why it didn't work out, you still lost their money. Let me know down in the comments below. These guys and are $65,000 richer and all it cost them was their entire reputation. Zachary Kaplan and Garrison Bellick left quite a trail of evidence on the internet at this point, telling the world exactly what type of people they are. Just make a new name. Just invent a new name. They are. Big deal. Thanks to YouTubers like Callum Upton and Kira TV, it's been incredibly yep. well documented and I think it's safe to say no one in their right mind would work with these guys or give them money in the future. We'll see about that. Next up, we have Identity. Identity is another game put on Kickstarter way back in 2015 that promised the moon. It was going to deliver not just any MMO That's experience, the but the MMO experience where you could do literally anything in a game full of other people doing literally anything they okay. want. The world and its economy would be determined by the players playing yep. the game. What did they need from the public? Just $150,000 to deliver That's an it. experience that AAA studios would spend hundreds of millions on. Yes. But this was 2015, before we'd seen a ton of scam Kickstarter projects materialize and fail to deliver. People's guards were down, and so they managed to collect 10 times their goal, with over $1.5 million earned. How did they do this? Well, a handful of assets purchased from the Unreal Engine shop and placed into a world, of course. We are. Leave your mark. Gain fame through your expressions. Wow. Gaming really is something nowadays, isn't it? starting to see a trend here, aren't we? Pledgers were even able to spend $5,000 for packages that would allow them to go into the office and game with the development team. Except there wasn't one. There was no op. Passport stamp, a unique backer hat, closed beta access, plus $15,000 of in-game cash, plus used motorcycle, plus sports car, plus semi-truck, plus penthouse apartment, plus a five-car garage, closet stacked with a dozen random outfits, plus 60-minute video conference with John and the development team, plus design your own unique in-game t-shirt, plus invitation to visit the office and spend half the day gaming with the team. Office, and there was no development team, just two friends. The wow. studio was only just created immediately prior to this Kickstarter by John Vanderswet. One of the consistent problems with all of these scams is the lies. Every development studio on this list has a habit of lying. These lies were a large part of why people were willing to give their money to these projects in the first place. Yeah, of course. It is these lies that should absolutely come back to haunt them in court, but for some reason, never do. In the case of John Vanderswit, his lie was that he had invested lots of his own money in the game and that he just needed the last- Well, it was a lot of his money because he had $100 and he invested like $50. So that's like half of his total net worth into this game. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I said, yeah, $50, it's a lot of fucking money, man. He had $100, now he's only got 50 left. He spent half his money on this shit. 150000 to get it over the finish line. He even went as far as saying, should we meet our goal here in Kickstarter, we'll have everything we need to ensure that uh -huh. identity gets completed. As mentioned, the game received 10 times what he asked for. John received $1.5 million. So according to him, this was now a slam dunk. He needed 150000 but received $1.5 The estimated delivery of this game, oh according to the God. Kickstarter page, December of 2016. The Kickstarter closed and they began out. accepting additional funding on their own personal website. Smart, it wasn't yeah. until 2016, the year the game was due to release, that people started becoming suspicious of the problem. You've got to remember, like 2015 16, this was in the dark ages of MMOs where there were no good MMOs that had come out. Final Fantasy was still garbage. Warlords of Draenor was in full swing. Like, every other MMO was dead, bad, or garbage. So, like, people were throwing their money at anything. Project. Noticing that outside of the initial video of some pre-made assets placed into Unreal Engine, the only thing the developers had produced for the public were some sketches and some conversations. Yet another thing this game has in common with the rest of the games on this list. With the beta supposedly just months away, the developers still had zero footage of the game to show to the backers. Heck, they couldn't even manage to share a screenshot. The developers explained that they were simply too busy to communicate with the public yeah, due to the TV. fact that they were hard at work on the game. So they were claiming they didn't have time to do this. Simply hitting the print screen button here will do the trick. 
the image is now on your clipboard, ready to paste into paint or other imaging programs. Yeah, but like, I mean, then they have to use it on another program and then name it and then put it on the website and you have to talk to the website developer and then you have to upload to the website and then you have the resolution of the picture and like what if the revolution resolution is wrong? And, and so like you put all these things together and it's like, there's just no way we can get this out in time. Like you just, yeah, there's <laughs> no way. Yeah, that makes total sense. It's at this point that the people with a brain started to realize something was wrong, while yeah. the zealots without a brain attacked them for questioning their developers. This is the stage we see all too often in these publicly funded game development games cycles. The first people to talk critically about the game and question how realistic its plans are are crucified by those who have chosen to... Remember, this is what happened to me with New World, is I was... I spoke out, and they hated me for it believe in their new higher power without questioning it a couple of months before the beta due date they announced that I something knew. playable would be available in 2017 this was a delay but not a massive one they followed this announcement up with an actual video of gameplay much to everyone's surprise amazing the video received hundreds of thousands of views and was mostly well received by the audience but now with 2017 coming and going despite the promise of a playable beta releasing that year an announcement would come on november 3rd 2017 stating that something playable would be released on march 21st 2018. it what wouldn't be shithole. the whole game but rather just a small module not the entire world that you could do anything you wanted anywhere you wanted but instead one small town square yeah it's like i mean you, you, you're not really gonna get the thing that you were paying for but like you will get something at this point, Asylum had raised over $800,000, over yes. five times what it asked for. It was also Pantheon behind be schedule and proposing to deliver a small fraction yeah. of the game that was promised. But at least it was something tangible. Oh, that's smart for them to put Lyric on the screen since, like, Lyric plays a lot of games like this. So it's like, hopefully they're trying to bait his audience into watching it or to get him to look at it. That's smart players would finally be able to boot up and play. On February 12th, 2018, they finally released a trailer with actual gameplay footage. Although this footage was incredibly underwhelming. Mm -hmm. As much as backers wanted to see this gameplay, they were ultimately disappointed with what they got. This game still looked like little more than some basic assets slapped into the Unreal Engine, something we're growing all too familiar with now. Backers had one thing to keep their hopes up. The playable beta was only weeks away. Yeah. That is until Asylum delayed it again, but oh. this time only by a month. Given players had waited- I'm starting to see a trend here. This long, one extra month was not a big deal. Yeah, true. Then days before the launch, they delayed it again, this time indefinitely. And why not? They had at this point made over $1 million by delivering absolutely nothing. Players still knew next to nothing about the game, something that seems to be quite key to getting thousands of people to part with millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Tell them you're creating something amazing while also telling them nothing at all and watch how easily- Well, exactly, because the, the less that you tell people, the more that you can get out of them. Because everything in their mind is always going to be better than what the reality is a fool and his money are separated on november oh, yeah. 30th 2018 the game would finally be playable on steam oh, wow. or at least the town square module wow, which is just is a good. name for a handful of buildings slapped together around a few streets that players could walk around Wait, where's he going players could no is longer imagine what the game would be instead they had to face what it actually was he's on an unplayable moon. unsalvageable mess and Oof. so with the illusion shattered players would stop sending funding to the game the game instantly received a mostly negative review on Steam, the worst yeah. that you could get. So where is Asylum Entertainment and its MMO five years later? Almost none of the bugs or problems that existed at launch have been fixed, but it gets better. It seems John Vanderswet, emboldened by successfully scamming his backers, couldn't help himself. In 2020, he would go on to explain that the studio needed more money to finish Identity. That's smart. The game that had basically seen no progress in almost two years since its release. He explained yeah, like, that another developer had asked Well, because if you can get money for him once, at that point, the thing is, it's easier to get money from people multiple times because then they're invested into it, you know? Asylum to be the publisher of their mobile game. Now, you might be wondering, why would yeah. any developer in their right mind go to this man to publish their game, given his 100% track record of failure in delivering games as a studio? <laughs> well, what he did not tell everyone is that the developer that approached him to publish their game was him. Yeah, he created a second studio to develop a mobile game while he was supposedly working on identity. And that's smart. This guy, yeah, let him cook, uh-huh. 
Smart he needed guy. us to give him more money to fund this new game so that Identity would have the money it needed yep. to finish. He even created a this brand new- This is like, bro, can I borrow $5? No, I'll pay you back the $10 from last week tomorrow. But yeah, could I get $5 today? Cause like, yeah, it's like, cause then I gotta have like a fucking, like my money's tied up right now, but like tomorrow I'm going to get paid and like, then I'll get you this five. You know what? I just get you 20 back. All right. So like, if I could just get $5. Kickstarter campaign <laughs> Yo, for the King, new mobile game called Furballs. This is perhaps the most infuriating part of people getting away with this. Uh -huh. They dive right into it again. He claimed that none of the money from Absolutely. Identity went into the new mobile game and that he only worked on it on his free time while he wasn't working on Identity. Yep. Two things that are all but certainly a lie. Fortunately, this time the Kickstarter campaign would be a complete failure. People were not as easily fooled by John given the reputation that he had now rightfully earned for himself. He should have just done it under a fake name. Why would he do it under the same name? That was stupid. He should have just invented a new person. Like, just have an AI create a new character, a new human being, and then just use that person and be like, that's me now. I'm now Bill. And uh, Bill is just a lifelong MMORPG fan. He loves video games. He grew up playing Pac-Man, and now he's trying to make one of his own. He's got 15 years in the, uh, in the, in the space, in the industry. He worked for Microsoft and like you know photoshop him next to bill gates and just fucking make an entirely new person kira tv did some great research on john after the fact and discovered that he had consistently moved into a more expensive home despite john claiming Hi, that bill, he lost okay. money on the venture and had no other form of employment yeah, one oh, could theorize that a substantial amount of the money that was due to be invested into identity mm -hmm. actually was just used to buy John a nicer house. If that's the case, would anyone be surprised? Recently, Asylum put up a post a few months back mm -hmm. at the end of 2022, reaffirming that the game is still the studio's main priority, though they are also working on other projects. It's pro been a long time, far too long, since I gave you an update on identity and its progress. When are we going to see a new update? That's a difficult one to answer, but I do hope fairly soon. Projects now. <laughs> Tragically, the game itself is still available on Steam for $30, though with the reviews... We hit a bit of a vicious circle here, where in order to improve funding and development, we need to give you some awesome updates to build trust. But at the same time, we had to feed our families, and we couldn't do that without the funding. So we decided that we could start some smaller projects in-house to raise money for identity, and that's actually gone quite well. Yeah, it's going to be fine, guys. Said it's garnered, I doubt anyone is falling for it. After eight years and $1.6 million raised, uh -huh. all John was able to produce was a few assets slapped into Unreal Engine yes. in a completely unplayable state. Whether it was malicious intent or complete ignorance, I would never invest in John Vanderswit ever again. He's proven that he's willing to embellish on his experience as a developer and fail to reach unrealistic goals. I've always said this, I'll say it again. If somebody, if you're doing something and you can't make sure that you can enforce the contract, you need, like, the moment that anything, even the smallest detail is off. If they say to meet you at McDonald's and they're at the other Taco Bell, uh, nope, I gotta go home, I gotta go. If you're buying it for $450 and they give you $440, nope. No, I, I, I gotta go, guys. I, I gotta go, yeah, uh, that's it, I'm done. Because anything fucking anything like that if a person is operating in good faith they're not gonna lie to you at all while moving into a nice smoke, house and attempting to fire. cash in on a That's mobile right. game that he developed while supposedly you have working to be on a game that like people this. gave him 1.5 million dollars to develop they're never getting that john bender's whip has a new house but he John's lost his gone. reputation proven by the fact that his second kickstarter earned him a whopping 430 dollars next up we have day of dragons day of dragons was supposed to essentially be a survival game where you played as a dragon you spawn that sounds fucking stupid what dumbass thought of this and in as an egg then you have to navigate the typical oh you spawn in as an egg i've ah yeah i know where this is going guys 
survival game elements like yep. hunger, thirst, and predators, with the twist being that you were actually a dragon instead of a person. This is simple enough, and unlike many of the games on this list, sounds like an actually achievable goal. The Kickstarter started on September 2nd of 2019 and promised to deliver the game just two months later. Oh, that's easy. Okay, well, that part sounds a lot less achievable. It yeah. set an initial goal of $12,000, but by the end of the campaign, it had... Bro, like that scaly and furry culture, there's nobody that has more monies than them. Like, I'm telling you, bro, like they, they, drop, a, they drop a rack or two on a fursuit, and I hear from other people that those things get dirty. made over half a million dollars once again the demo that sold the entire game is just another asset flip yeah. demo meaning that the supposed developer of the game simply purchased these assets on the I unreal engine knowledge. store threw them into the game and gave the impression that this is the type of work that they were able of producing the kickstarter claimed that this game had been in development for two years but the developer jo himself was a ghost no one could find him on the internet or any proof of him having any experience in the industry Though that didn't stop J.O. from making over $500,000 from this Kickstarter campaign. J.O. would even go on to post pictures of work that wasn't even his own as examples of progress being made on the game. Essentially That's smart, you know, that way, because like you can show the work, but you don't have to do it. So it's like a win-win situation. Like number one, people are happy. Number two, you don't have to do anything. So it's like this is an obvious decision. ...lying about what was being done to the game. Seeing the success of his Kickstarter campaign, J.O. greedily rushed to add more tiers of yeah, funding smart. to the Kickstarter campaign, oh, yeah. such as extra Dragon DLCs that founders would have to yep. purchase to enjoy. This wasn't all, though. He even intended to sell merchandise for the game he hadn't built yet. Smart. Everything he was doing and saying was 100% focused on extracting money from the people that supported his game. When accused of simply using focus on... I just can't see how any person in their right mind can look at this and think that it's worth even one dollar i would pay one dollar to not have to see this like i would pay five dollars to never have to play this like if somebody said all right listen you either play you, you know you're you're locked in a room and you have to either give us twenty dollars to leave or you have to play this game for eight hours i would give them twenty dollars extracting money from the people that supported his game. When accused of simply using store-bought assets, J.O. denied it, claiming that he had coded a substantial portion of the game himself. But when a oh, Linux yeah, version I of the Steam build was unpacked, it revealed that there were only four lines of custom code in the entire game. A okay, game so it was, it was a custom, it's custom code, right? Yeah, that's custom, right? For sure. He had supposedly been working yeah, like on kind of, for two years and had secured half a million in funding. Well, it's like one line of code every six months. Being to finish, had an impressive four lines of code in it. When the beta of the game was finally released to the content creators to play, it was 100% asset flipped without any core functions existing in the game uh -huh. at all. You literally spawn in and fly around. That's it. There was no eating, drinking, or... So it's like Dragonflight. Any systems in the game, there wasn't even sound. It was nothing more than store-bought dragons placed with a store-bought terrain package into a pre-created example map. Guys. This is where they got the, the idea. Terrain package. But despite the fact that the game was so far from finished, mm -hmm. to Geo's credit, the game did release in 2019 as promised. Wow. So, where is the game now? Almost four years later in 2023. Yeah. How's it doing? Well, probably not where you'd expect, actually. It's currently on Steam with recent reviews showing a very positive rating. What? While the all-time review is mostly positive, it's got hundreds of players online at any given moment and is receiving monthly updates to the game. Presently, you can do little more than choose one of the multiple dragons available in the game, fly around, and kill a few things. And after a half a million dollar cash injection from the Kickstarter, plus the money made from the thousands of Steam sales at $20 each, and over three years of additional development time, it's still incredibly far from being a finished game, but play So furries are just keeping this game on life support? Like, I don't understand. Players seem to be enjoying yeah, the game, thanks to the yeah. sheer beauty of Unreal Engine 5 and the gorgeous dragons they get to fly around as in this small and simple world. The fact that there doesn't seem to be much more to it than that doesn't seem to bother the customers. And if the customers are happy, that's all that really matters, right? 
You. Was this a game that was meant to be a scam, or was it just incredibly poorly handled in the early days? No one knows except for J.O. The game isn't finished, nor is it close to finished, but it's still being supported, and its players are, on average, quite happy. I bet you can make a furry sex game and have it be complete garbage, and people would still play it. So it looks like, for now at least, that J.O. has been delivering on his promise of making a Dragon Simulator game that people could enjoy. As expected, progress is slow, as this is about as small an indie dev as you can get. But it would appear he is legitimately trying, which makes this story a nice change of pace from the rest on this list. I mean, I think the takeaway from this video should be that it's entirely too easy to make it look like you are creating something amazing in Unreal Engine. When in reality, all you've done is purchased a few assets from talented individuals and slapped them into a map that you also bought from another talented individual. That's Most smart. of these games showed a few moments of gameplay inside yep. of a gorgeous engine using entirely purchased assets that would take an experienced developer mere hours to put together. They then leveraged that footage and greatly exaggerated their experience while promising the moon to successfully separate people from their money. The main difference between the MMOs on this list that ended in failure and the one that has a positive rating in Steam is that the ones that failed promised to solve technical problems AAA studios in the genre with hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal have not been I able wanna to- I want to just go back just so you guys can listen to this one more time and contextualize it around I think one of the biggest ones that we're hearing about right now. ...that footage and greatly exaggerated their experience while promising the moon to successfully separate people from their money. The main difference between the MMOs on this list that ended in failure and the one that has a positive rating in Steam is that the ones that failed promised to solve technical problems AAA studios in the genre with hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal have not been able to solve. That's the exact thing that people are complaining about with Doc saying that his game is going to solve cheating. It's the exact same thing. Meanwhile, Day of Dragons merely promised to be a simple game that is little more than a dragon simulator. A promise that is actually realistic to deliver on. If you take anything away from this video, let it be that. Ashes? It... Well, no. I mean, the difference I would say with Ashes is that they actually have a playtest of a siege. They, they have a playtest of a siege that exists on YouTube that you can look up right now. Like, it, it, no, it's not copy. It, it's... But it's, but it's there. You can look at, but I, but you can look it up. MMO promises to deliver everything. If it promises to have every system you can imagine and to have player uh -huh. numbers, the developers can only dream of fitting into a single server. <laughs> that MMO is either being driven by malicious intent or severe incompetence, neither of which you should be giving money to until it's a finished product that has proven its worth. And if you do give it your money, history has shown that you will be disappointed. So be careful with those Kickstarter campaigns, friends. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the amazing content creators like yep, Kira TV and Callum one. Upton, who have both done a lot to protect the MMO community from fraudulent Kickstarters by covering them in depth. Massive oh, yeah. shout out to my YouTube members. If you want to be a YouTube member to help me make the best content I can and for behind the scenes footage, emotes and private discord channels and more, click the join button down below. Please like and subscribe for the algorithm. This gods. is a great video. And if you're into it, catch me live on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. If you're there not sure is. what to do next, check out one of the amazing videos popping up on screen right now. Easy. Eat motherfucking tea. This is a great video. I like that one a lot. Let me link it for you guys. There it is. Yeah, I, I don't understand. Why were people giving the example of Ashes whenever Ashes had a playtest showing that many people actually moving around and playing in the game? Like, I mean, I'm not... The thing is, like, I'm not trying to, like, shit on it, on it but, like, that's just... Ashes is copium. Well, like, how's it copium if, if, if you can see it, though? I don't understand. Like, how could that possibly be copium? Yeah, you're memeing? No, okay, yeah, I mean, if it's just memes, that's fine. I just, it, it just didn't make sense to me. That's all. But yeah, this video is fucking amazing. I love this, uh, especially talking about the scams in these games. They're so fucking funny, especially seeing people just dump their money into it. Oh my God, how can you possibly do that? It is crazy. A trip, one needed, one needed trip.